Good morning. On behalf of all of us assembled here, we would like to welcome all who are visiting with us this morning and any who are new to our parish family, welcome. If you haven't done so already, we ask that all cell phones be silenced at this time. If you haven't received a song sheet, please raise your hand high for an usher to come around and give you one. Leading us in the celebration of the Eucharist is F Father John, who will be assisted by Deacon George. Please stand. We invite everyone to please pick up your song books and join in singing our gathering song, number 771, Our God is Here, number 771 in your green songbook.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace of God our Father, and His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Good morning. Water is a gift which sustains life. Through the mystery of this baptismal water, we ask God to sustain us in Christ's risen life and to heed the call of Jesus to keep his commandments out of love for him. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, hear the prayers of your people. We celebrate our creation and redemption. We give you thanks for this blessed water, which gives us refreshment and cleansing. Your people were led to freedom through the waters of the Red Sea, and in their thirst for the desert were given water from the rock. Christ made holy the waters of baptism by his own baptism in the Jordan by John. By it, you give us a new birth. You renew us in holiness. May this water now remind us of our baptism and let us share the joy of all who were baptized at Easter. We pray through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. You have promised, O oh God, to make your home with those who hear your word and put it into practice. Do not let our hearts be troubled or afraid, but send the Holy Spirit to remind our hearts of all that Jesus has taught us and to make us effective witnesses to your saving plan for all the world. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered to them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of Gentile origin. Greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas who will also convey the same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing east, three gates north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stones as its foundation, on which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light and its lamp was the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me telling you, I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Peace, I leave with you. 
My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. My dear sisters and brothers, today's Gospel reading from John takes us back to the farewell discourse of Jesus when he prepares his disciples for his imminent departure from them. And this separation from Jesus, understandably, brings sadness and even fear to his friends as they hear the Lord's final words before his death. And so he left them with a promise of peace. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. And he comforts them, saying, Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. And reassure them, saying, I am going away, but I will come back to you. And a few days later, after his blood had dried at the foot of his cross, the resurrected Jesus appeared to his disciples and picked up where he had left off, as he greeted them with, Peace be with you. And so true peace, putting it simply, is having Jesus in our lives. As he himself tells us in today's Gospel, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. In other words, true peace can only be found in the indwelling of God in our souls. So often, as Pope Francis said, we confuse peace with tranquility. And that's very true. Peace, interior peace, can only come from God, from Jesus. Tranquility, however, comes from the world and is totally dependent on external circumstances. When apparently everything is going well in our lives, when we have all the dogs in a row, good health, good job, money in the bank, no family issues, and so on. And this gives us a sense of a kind of peace, at least for some time, until one of the ducks gets knocked down, when our do not disturb sign falls off, and then our so-called peace vanishes in a moment. And why is that? Because in reality what we had was tranquility, the false peace that Jesus warns us about in the Gospel, the peace the world gives. And so true peace, the peace that Jesus gives, comes from heaven. A week ago on May 13th, we celebrated the 105th anniversary of the first apparition of Our Lady to the three shepherd children of Fatima, Lucia, the oldest, was just 10 years old. Francisco, her cousin, was nine. And Jacinta, only seven years of age. The Blessed Mother introduces herself to them by saying, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. As if saying, Peace be with you. And Lucia asks Our Lady, Where are you from? I am from heaven, she said. Will I go to heaven? Yes, you will. And Jacinta? She will go also. And Francisco? He will go there also, but he must pray many rosaries. Little Francis was not granted the grace to hear the Blessed Mother during the apparitions, 
only the vision. He relied on Lucia and Jacinta to tell him what was said. So afterwards, recounts Lucia, we told Francisco all that Our Lady had said. He was overjoyed and happy when he heard of the promise that he would go to heaven and crossing his hands on his breast, he exclaimed, Oh, my dear lady, I'll say as many rosaries as you want. Once again, my dear sisters and brothers, peace comes from heaven, and it starts with prayer. Prayer opens a channel between us and God, a channel through which the grace of God flows into our heart and brings peace to our soul. Mother Teresa explains the source of peace this way. The fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. And the fruit of service is peace. Peace starts with prayer. In times of intimacy, of indwelling with God, as Jesus tells us, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Without prayer, as St. John Paul II said, there can't be no joy, no hope, no peace. And so, although peace is a gift from God, Nevertheless, we must do our part to keep that channel between us and heaven open in order to receive peace. It is the indwelling of the Holy Trinity in our soul that brings us peace. Peace comes from heaven, not from the world. And we see this happening over and over again in the lives of the saints. St. Maximilian Colby shows us that even external circumstances, even persecution and suffering cannot rob us of the peace that Jesus gives. Even in the worst of all the places like Auschwitz, true peace can be found in the heart of those who truly love God. In July 1941, Three prisoners escaped from the concentration camp of Auschwitz. And as a punishment, ten men were randomly selected to be starved to death. And when one of the men heard his name being called selected to die, he cried out for mercy. My wife, my children. At that very moment, Maximilian Colby took a step forward and volunteered to take the place of this unknown person. Of the ten prisoners sentenced to die in one cell, Father Colby was the last man left. The guards kept coming back to check on the good priest, but he still was able to stand and to kneel, praying and singing hymns of praise to Jesus and Mary as he slowly entered the kingdom of heaven in perfect peace. And little Francisco, he lived in peace, even in the midst of the worst pandemic that the world has ever known, the Spanish influenza and he became sick from it. When Lucia asked him if he was suffering much, he replied, Yes, I am. I suffer it all for the love of our Lord and our Lady. And as promised, 
the Blessed Mother came and took him to heaven at the age of 11. He was not afraid to die. He was ready. He had prayed many rosaries. He was at peace with God. Last week, on May 13, at the end of the celebrations in Fatima, an image of Our Lady of the Rosary was blessed by the bishop to be sent to Ukraine. And the words of Our Lady, on her first apparition 105 years ago, were repeated once again in Fatima, when she said to the children, and is saying to all of us today, Pray the Rosary every day in order to obtain peace to the world and the end of the war. If we could only understand that peace in the world starts with each one of us with prayer, then the world, those around us, would know that the peace that Jesus gives truly is. Our Lady of the Rosary, Queen of Peace, pray for us and for the whole world. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us offer our intentions to the God who has first loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. May the Church share generously with those who suffer from want, embodying our Lord's command to love one another and showing the way to the Father who is love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May every nation on earth act uprightly, working to bring justice and peace to all the citizens of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we, who have been born of God and know the God who is love, fulfill Christ's command to love one another as Christ loved us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May Maurizio Coco and all our faithfully departed who kept the commandments and abided in Christ's love know forever the joy of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God grant these needs which we hold in our hearts. For these needs, and for Shirley Imgrun, Edward Pager, Robert Lennon, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you sent your Son to live among us, to love us to the end, and to bring our joy to completion. Hear these our prayers that we might enjoy the fullness of risen life with him. We pray through the same Christ our Lord.
Let us now pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offering, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this season to laud you even more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world, while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, Together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people, you have made your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the apostles, with the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we come to be co-heirs to eternal life. May we praise you forever through Jesus Christ, your Son. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Because through our baptism we have become the sisters and brothers of Jesus, we can dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your people, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever.
May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with each one of you. Thank you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
physically receive Eucharist at this time, I invite you to make an act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, you have given us your real presence in both the Word and the Eucharist. At this time, I'm not able to receive you sacramentally in the Eucharist, but I can receive you in my heart spiritually. Come to me, Lord. Fill me with your presence. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, transform me. Water flowing from the side of Christ, cleanse me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Hide me within your wounds. Never let me be separated from you. Defend me from all evil. Make me an instrument of your love, your peace, your joy to everyone I meet. O my Savior, my only hope, I place all my trust in you. I believe in you. I hope in you. I love you. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restores us to eternal life and the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruit of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. We pray through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he fill you with peace. May he give you every blessing now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and bear witness to Christ who is gloriously risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a wonderful week.